So we've already introduced the basic assumptions and in, in intuition about the hector aline model. Now I want to go into this in a little bit more detail using graphical techniques. So if you recall, hector aline assumes identical technologies, identical tastes across countries, but that the factor endowments, the relative factor endowments of the two countries differ, and that the goods have different factor intensities. The particular assumption, we have two, two countries, we have country A and country B, going to assume that country A is capital abundant, equivalently that country B is labor abundant, good X is the capital intensive good in both countries, Y is the labor intensive good in both countries, and we will have this set up in order to analyze the direction of trade according to hector -Lean. So hector -Lean is a neoclassical model that is trying to explain the patterns of trade. Okay. Bottom line, it's about predicting the patterns of trade. And the differences in the factor endowments are going to drive relative prices and drive uh, uh, countries to, uh, to have an incentive to trade with each other. I'm going to come back to this assumption, uh, this further assumption about uh, the demand conditions in just a moment. But let me draw representative PPFs given these assumptions. So the PPF that's skewed out towards the y-axis, that's bowed out in this direction towards the labor-intensive good, is going to be the labor-abundant country. And the other one that's skewed out more towards the capital-intensive good is the PPF for country A. So the, 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 de, uh, the definitions of capital abundant is not so much that good uh, country A can produce more of X in a literal sense, but instead that it's, it's about the trade-offs between the two. So for example, just as a, a little bit of a digression, so we could have a PPF, two PPFs, that look like this. Okay? This would be the PPF for country A. This would be the PPF for country B. A is skewed out more towards the capital intensive good. B can produce more of the capital intensive good, but it's the trade-off that, that matters. Okay, so let's go into this now thinking about the uh, the demand condition. because This is purely on the supply side. This is just the production possibility frontier. So this is where this assumption is going to come into place. Into, into play. So this is a more a more stringent assumption that is actually required for uh, uh, for hectoraline, but this this particular assumption is going to make it easy to draw. So we're going to assume that good X and good Y are always consumed in the same proportion in both countries. Um, now, how, how do you depict that? That would be, for example, if these two countries consumed Y and X at this proportion given by the, the blue line. They, if, let's say they always buy exactly this ratio of good Y and good X, okay, depicted by this straight line. If that's the case, where do the two countries consume and produce an autarky? Well, that's going to be given by that point for country B and that point for country A. Okay, they both are going to consume the goods in the same proportion. And so this is where production equal to consumption 
for both goods in country A. And if you re recall, if we take a line that is tangent to the PPF at that proportion, I'm going to get rid of this, this line because it's going to get it going to get in the way. So the tangency of the of this line of the PPF is going to give us the slope of that is going to give us the relative price of X in country A. So that angle, or the slope of that blue line, is the relative price of X in country A in autarky. And the slope of the PPF at this point is going to give us the relative price of X in autarky in country B. Yeah, think about this angle. So what we see here is a depiction really of the of the uh, pattern of comparative advantage in the hector only framework. Country A that has that is abundant in capital is going to be able to produce the uh, relatively more the capital intensive good at a lower price. That relatively flat line compared to this one means that the relative price of X in country A, in the capital abundant country, is less than the slope of the PPF for country B. Relative price of X in A is less than the relative price of X in country B. A will be able to export good X to country B vice versa for the labor-intensive good. Country B will have the low relative price of the labor-intensive good, be able to export it to, to country A. So that's really hectorally. We've got different relative factor endowments, different relative intensities of the good, and we have this predict predictable comparative advantage. Let me write this hectorally result down. Okay, a country will have a comparative advantage in the good that uses its relatively abundant factor intensively. Country A is abundant in capital. We'll have a lower relative price of the capital intensive good. Country B, the labor abundant country, have a comparative advantage in the labor intensive good. Now let me come back to the intuition that I introduced in, a, in another video. So here's this graphical result, but the intuition is really quite straightforward. The abundance of capital in country A means that the, the capital will be cheap in country A. Cheap capital means it's going to be cheap to produce the capital intensive good. You can produce the capital intensive good cheaply, you can sell it at a low price. That's hectorial lean. The other country, abundance of labor, means cheap labor, means it's, produce, it's cheap to produce the labor intensive good, and the countries will want to trade with each other. So that's um, the graphical version of the hectorial lean framework, and uh, we've got one more that we'll be looking more directly at uh, factor.